Hey guys, it's Jager262 and welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I have another Armored Warfare news video for you today. So, first things first, as you know, we're almost through the first week of April and there is no update on the new Asian vehicles in the game. That would be the two tier 9 South Korean AFVs and the South Korean main battle tank at tier 10. Um, if you watch the coronavirus update, they said things are going to be slowing down and they gave us a time table that we would have those at the end of March and have a new content slash event for the first week of April. Since then, they have announced the new event. It is Raid. It is a multiplayer co-op style map where you and a party will read certain positions for resources and over the course of a month, you will gain more XP, secret camouflages, boosters, and that sort of thing from every raid you complete successfully. This is not a part of the co-op story mission or spec ops missions. This is something different. And in order to access this event, you will have to beat all four spec op missions in hardcore in a tier 9 or tier 10 vehicle to be allowed to join the raid. Now, if that's going to come out before the new vehicles do, I am not sure, but as the first line of this article suggests, they are working to bring Raid out soon. We're looking at probably next week or the third week of April. And with that, an all-new Asian-themed battle path, which they've announced previously, but it looks like those things are going to come out around the same time. So you'll have a month to do raid and then they'll launch the battle path or they'll launch the battle path alongside raid. I don't really know which is which, but suffice it to say that both of those things will probably come out before we get those high tier vehicles. And that's pretty much standard for the development team at Armored Warfare. So nothing new there. Like I said, I think the longest was almost four months from the release of a tech tree to get the other half with the French vehicles. So... Actually, I think it was closer to six months. So this is not that long, really. Um, I was just kind of hoping when they released the times table that they would have the vehicles out when they said they would. But no worries. Now to the point of this video, the Type 74. Some of you might know this vehicle as being the Tier 10 Japanese tank, or medium tank, got to switch gears, in World of Tanks. And it is one of the strongest vehicles after rebalancing that World of Tanks has seen in a long time, and it keeps all of the attributes that make it that strong in World of Tanks now that it's crossed over to Tier 5 in Armored Warfare. So, as always, I'm going to leave a link to this article in the description below, and you can read it at your leisure. Uh, it's basically just a history of this vehicle right here. It's one of the first generation of main battle tanks, or actually, no, it's the first generation of indigenous Japanese main battle tanks uh, was the Type 74, because previously they were using American vehicles. And so you can see its development, you can see the Type 61, which is with the tank that came before it. Pretty much just an M47 patent license and built, which is why I said this is the first real indigenous one. Uh, it does use a British gun, but we'll get into all that later. So here's all the cool history, development, all this stuff. What makes it special? And as always, this is subject to change. This will be, like I said, a premium vehicle. So you will have to buy it or possibly win it with the Asian Battle Path. But the T-74, or Type 74, is special because of its mobility and what it can do with this pneumatic suspension. So when it was unveiled in real life, the pneumatic suspension allowed it to achieve ridiculous mobility. And I don't mean like actually moving, I mean in terms of positioning its gun, giving it great depression, moving side to side, not just up and down. So we know that we already have the forward and back pneumatic suspension in the game for a lot of vehicles. And only a few have the side to side, and I don't know which ones they are. They don't actually reference them by name in this article, but this will have both, and it will be the lowest tier vehicle to have this feature. Now, why is that so important? The reason is what it's going to be able to do with this gun now, and that is achieve negative 14 degrees of gun depression down slopes. That doesn't sound as crazy as it should, but that is actually really insane. You think most main battle tanks in the game right now, especially at tier 5, get about negative 5 to negative 8 degrees of gun depression. The Leopard has negative 8, which is what they balance this as in the game that's closer to the Leopard, because it has the same armor 
profile as the Leopard at tier 5. And the reason for that is that they both use steel armor, so it has no armor protection. It's mainly going to be a sniping main battle tank. However, it takes the 8 degrees it gets stock and can go down to 14 or up to 15 elevation, again, using that pneumatic suspension. Now, because it is so light, it gets a crazy amount of mobility. A top speed of 60 kilometers an hour, 0 to 32 in only 5 seconds, well, 5.5 seconds, with a whole traverse rate at 35 degrees per second. So it will actually be a little bit faster than the Leopard, and again, these numbers are going to change once it's actually in-game, and I'll do an in-depth review there, but that's what the Type 74 is all about. Using the suspension to achieve greater protection for the vehicle, you get a camo buff. You go from 19 to 23% camo when you're not, I don't want to say squished down, but when you're not depressed. Like the whole vehicle, when it's depressed hull down, gets 23% of camouflage, whereas if it's just normal, 19. However, they do dock you 5 meters of view range when you're doing this. And just like all vehicles in the game now, it will affect how well the vehicle moves when it's lower. That's not really a big deal, and that's not really going to do too much. Now, it uses an L7 105mm gun. That is a British weapon, but it's the same type of weapon as the Leopard again. So you're going to get 400mm penetration out of your fin discarding Sabo. You're going to get 250 out of Hesh, and then HE is the same as always. And they do say it has a 6.3 second reload time. However, it has apparently, the way they balance it right now, the greatest damage per minute value of all tier 5 main battle tanks. So again, along with mobility, this would make it not only the most mobile, but give it the greatest DPM. And what they're implying here is that that extra mobility allows you to achieve a crazy DPM as well, because you're constantly able to move, hide, or adjust your angle of attack to constantly be firing on enemies and avoid enemy shells. However, that remains to be seen, because this is probably going to be far, far in the future. I predict that this vehicle will be seen with the launch of the Asian-themed Battle Path, along with those high-tier vehicles, all coming in at the same time. But we'll see how it goes. As always, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you're excited to see more Japanese vehicles enter the game. I know I am. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to catch these reviews or other news episodes about Armored Warfare. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the battlefield.